Hello! Last week uh, I had a delivery of bowls, antiques, I had a load of, um, what are they called, full moon, brand new ones. Anyway, uh, I've been through the bowls already, I've opened all the boxes, given my wife over, all the rest of it, so they're all fado. I had loads of these cut fado. Now, uh, I think altogether now I've had two shipments of these. And I haven't got, really got any for sale uh, at the moment. I'm going to start listing them for sale now. Uh, I'm going to keep a couple of sets myself. Um, I've got one set up for sale, I think. One set of seven, anyway. I need a better stick than this. It's a bit big. Hang on. There you go, that's better. So I've been through uh, maybe 20 of them, give them a clean set. So they arrive, they're really dirty. Um, all I do is I wash them, wipe them over, and it gets rid of the sort of cred really. So you're left with a bowl and the patina is still there. So I've got, uh, what's this one? A sharp. They're, almost all of them are fourth octave, some of them are really thick. Uh, some fifth octave, one or two sixth octave. But they're amazing. If you want to get into collecting <coughs> antique bowls, that's the way you start, really. They're also, they're quite difficult to find now, and I've been really lucky. I've had two shipments, and I've possibly got maybe a hundred altogether of these bowls. I particularly, these are my absolute favourite bowls because. You can very quickly and relatively inexpensively build a lovely collection and you place them all together you can get a set of um, you set a seven in the fourth octave and all the sharps really easily for like uh, you know relatively little money compared to some of the other bowls. Oh they sound absolutely fantastic together. Plus we've got like a slightly larger ones, they're still Fado Cup, right? very old, all the detail is worn off these, there's a faint markings on the inside and not much. They're all really really easy, rim play is super easy. Now I'm going to be listing these soon on my stores, they range from these tiny ones, there's a couple even smaller than that actually. Well, that's uh, an A sharp again, lots of A sharps. Another A sharp. So I'm the same, don't I? The, bit, the thing is, like, when you put them together, that maybe there's only like three or four hertz separating them, but they sound fantastic when they're playing together. So G. Every one you will play. It's effortless. These are fantastic individual bowls in your bag or on your altar. Just for individual play really. Some of them are third eye and um, you know, they're great for third eye work. Not as good as some of the little manapuri I've got though. There's a beat. So I've got a set pretty much here in amongst this lot. It's a lovely dual tone one there. Like a, like a, like a coppery, brownie coppery. It's a different type altogether that one, but it's still a cap fado. Some of them are incredibly old by the look of them. Like this one here. I don't know, I don't know, hopefully you can see it, there's uh, concentric circles inside and there's nothing on the outside, maybe some lines on the outside rim but it's really crudely done. There's also an inner line, so that could be a water bowl actually, it could be a talking bowl. I mean, it's, it's really easy to find out if it is. I've just got a bit of water from my water bottle. 
I'm really like faff about with it now. Well, it could be. Maybe. And a little bit more water. See, a lot of the time, the inside of the bowl, you've got lines. Maybe two, sometimes three lines. You fill the water to the first one and you swirl it then. Or move the water to the, the topmost line. This one isn't a toy bowl. Almost, you know, I'm not going to discount it for now. Anyway, so that's it, cut the bado. It's going to take some time to go through these. Uh, oh, excuse me. I cleaned these up. Um, and I'm going to be listing them soon over the next. This week I'm going to stop. Or try to. There's a hundred of them to get through. It's all really easy to, uh, to make a set and just put seven up at a time. But, you know. They're not cheap then as a set. This one's got gorgeous little punch lines on the outside. This is a proper old thick one. What we call thick faro. Right then, that'll do for them. It's just a small percentage. I got a whole box of them here. I am cleaning them. And that's quite that's a sizable one, isn't it? That's like you know, that's pushing six inch. That's a nice ball. Yeah. They're filthy. See all the dirt on them? All I do is I wash them and uh, a lot of the crud comes off. And that's it. They look a lot better and they feel better. They sound better as well. Anyway, so I did have some larger fado as well. I think about 20 of them. We'll go through them now. I've gone over these. This one hasn't been cleaned, but there's still like some uh, paper on it or something. I don't think there's need, any need to clean it or wash it really. It's just, it's nearly pristine. This one's got punch lines on the outside. It's a thick bowl, really old. Almost all of these, well, you know, two thirds of them at least, are A note. This is a C, C4. It's got quite an inward facing rim as well, this. A classic Fado shape sound. I'll be listing these up this week. I'm going to get my ass in gear. The thing is, when you've got like hundreds of balls, it's difficult to keep track of them and to list them. It's quite time consuming, but it's worth it in the end. I mean, I'm in the business, so it uh, seems to me that I'm buying and selling balls now. So um, to keep it going, I've got to sell some. <laughs> I can't, keep, I can't keep buying them and just like storing them in boxes because it's getting a bit silly, you know. I need some return on it at least. This is gorgeous, like a golden colour Fado, classic Fado shape. It's quite a heavy, thick bowl. It's a G, I believe, here. Yeah. Superb. I don't forget, if you need any of these bowls, give me a shout and uh, we work out a price. I do have stores on eBay and Etsy. And until I can get my own website going, um, where I can, I can post uh, sound clips directly on there, you have to ask for sound clips. I can't, I haven't got time to record them all individually. But uh, hopefully this video now you'll be able to see what, what we're dealing with, you know. This is a lovely one again. We've got um, sun motifs all around the outside. Can you see it? Absolutely beautiful. We've got a slightly inward facing rim again. Worn concentric circles. And this is an A sharp.
Lovely. What else have we got? We've got quite a few of these. They uh, seem to be the same maker. Absolutely the same maker. The, um, the punch marks, the, the circles, the semicircles, circles, concentric circles, the same. And um, there used to be a line running on the outside there, near the centre, which is now almost worn away. These are truly ancient and, um, you know, they've, been, they've seen a lot of use through their lives. I believe this is an A-sharp again, yeah. Lovely. Now, I'm very, very fond of Fado. Um, initially, I wasn't that keen because um, I suppose they're some of the first bowls I had and uh, they were very thin walled, quite rackly. These thick ones are a different matter altogether. They're much older and they got a good energy. But there's some evidence on this one of it being sort of dual texture, got like a slightly darker. They're so old that they've worn away. Evidence of punch marks, which would be just, it could be just the centre of sun circles. Or they could be just punch marks. This one's quite crude with a, a kind of a scalloped lip almost. Certainly irregular. And I love this. Really crudely made. Truly ancient balls. Sylvia went here, look at this. It's obviously been cleaned up. Well, this is how I had it, I haven't touched it. There's another A sharp. What was this one? Yeah, it's an A that one. Lots of them look. They're similar size, similar thickness, so you're going to get a similar note. Slightly different frequencies, you know, within the, the spectrum. Relatively inexpensive for such a large bowl. These, um, you can pick these up for a good price from me. I think I had about 20 then. This is a big one, look. So you got, this is a different type, really. And again, you've got an inward facing lip or rim and a double row of um, punch marks around the rim. Um, nothing. Very, very worn concentric circles inside. It's not, yeah, it's an A sharp again. Although it's the largest of them, I think. It's Takes a bit of, get, a bit of warming up, I think, this one. It's really old. You can see the ancient. Uh, patina on it, you know, it's not something you can scrub off. This is like this patina has become part of the bowl. Oh, we got some smaller ones. That's really interesting. Um, really worn again. Double row of really, really faint um, punch marks. It's a classic fado shape, that one. They're really fine. There's not a hammer mark left on it. It's worn, smooth. It's quite a lightweight one. Even though it's thick. And that was, uh, that's a D actually. D4. What have we got now? Ah. Another lovely one with um, very worn sun motifs, nothing inside at all, no art. Uh, faint couple of lines underneath. That's got to be an A again, isn't it? Yep. A 
really interesting patina on there. Uh, some splashes of of uh, green and you know just leather I do. Another one, really clean. Uh, absolutely no art at all. It's just a smooth ball, and the remains of some circles inside. I'm guessing this is worn smooth or the remains of some ritual slashes there. Look. So it's so old, but it's worn away. That's gorgeous. This is um, my idea of a fado. It's effortless to play. Is that a G? Yeah, G. That could be the one that ends up with me actually, but I've already got many. I'd rather distribute about these amongst people who actually need them. And at the same time, earn myself a little profit to keep myself ticking over because um, it looks like I'm, I'm going to be a singing bowl dealer as well as some therapist in future. That's lovely, isn't it? It's a classic fellow shape and possibly it used to be dual texture. Which is really warm. That's an A again. That's a nice size as well. That's about seven inch by the look of it. Now this is a this is unusual. Um, would I would I call that a fadabati? I don't think so. It's more like, I don't know. I've had a couple of these, they're more jambati shape. This was like, look at the patina on that. It's really sharp, there's sharp lines on the rim, in the middle and inside. It's more like some of the cut bowl shapes. So, um, maybe it is a thado, you know, maybe. We could we have to call it a fado. It came with the faddos. It's pretty old anyway. I had this uh, singing yesterday, so it does sing. Unusual bowl, there's some copper oxide on the rim, which is not helping it. Anyway, so it could be a bargain that one. There's another type, which is quite similar, it's like in between the two really. Oh, this is really old. We've got evidence of some slashes on the outside. Tiny little slashes around the rim. Worn circles inside. And uh, quite a few hammer marks on it. That's a gorgeous, gorgeous bowl. It's an A again. What else have we got? Oh, we've got one of these like, incredibly rare Fado types. Now, it doesn't look it, but these are ancient. Very, very finely made. We've got lots of lines. We've got an inscription all the way around on the top rim. We've got a mantra there. Um, looks like we've got feathers. Oh, it's, it's quite worn, you know, but you can still see it. Leaves, a pair of leaves. Um, I don't know, I don't know. I'll have to study it in greater detail. Is there something inside it as well? It looks like at one point there was a mantra inside. That's really interesting. Right, I've got a pair of these up for sale. Uh, so this is uh, a third one. Shall I put it up as a trio or 
or sell it separately. Sound-wise, these don't appeal to me, so I offer them. And they're great, right? Like, you know, but it's not, it's not me. Now, well, every so often, once every like 50 bowls, one of these will come up, so they're not that, they're quite scarce. Now, the chap I buy them off, he just calls them a rare fado. And charges me more for them. That's a nice bowl. It's an E. It's an E3 actually. I think I got the pair for a, a, um, They're not cheap because they're so rare. Oh, we'll see. We'll see. Another mile up there. We will. Oh, look at this. A fantastic bowl. Really, really old. Um, the patina on it's really interesting, like a dark bronze. And you've got lines inside, lines on the outside. It's actually quite similar to this one, you know, in shape. So we're going to call that a fado. This is definitely a fado, but this is just a bit, bit shorter. It's an A sharp again. Another one, super thick, heavy, uh, tiny little slashes on the outside. You know, it's really small. They've never been sun circles, they're double row slashes. And look at the gorgeous patina on it. Truly ancient, hundreds of years old, three, four hundred years old. Some of these are like 500 year old even. It's a D sharp. Now, I asked for Fado and I got Ramuna, but I'm not complaining because these are probably one of the rarest now, the hardest to get a hold of, and it's inscribed. Make great water bowls as well, by the way, because of the shape of it. There you go. Um, can you see the inscription? It's completely clean. This is how we arrived. There's a little ding in the bottom somewhere, but uh, I'm not too bothered about that. And it, I stopped sort of worrying about the dings. I can't even see it now. They don't affect the sound, you know. There you go, it's tiny. It's another quite shallow one. Double row of circles, or, um, you know, pinch marks anyway, at least. It's another one of these types, isn't it? Yeah. It's so unusual, you know, I've never had these before, see? Maybe once I had one. And uh, I think I, I sold it as a jambati. But because of the decoration, it's a, it's a harabati. It's a really old type, different maker than some of these. Quite high, aren't they? You know, fast frequencies. It's fourth octave, is it? D, D four. Ah, it's another Ramuna. Well, this is a lovely, lovely, absolutely beautiful patina on this one. I oh got like uh, the copper oxide leaching through, and I love this. Absolutely love it. 
What's the sound like? Yeah, that's good. It's a B3. So if anyone needs a B Ramona for their set, get in touch because uh, I've already got one. Although mine's a bit smaller. Than that. There's another really, really old Fado. Uh, beautiful sun circles all the way around the rim. Uh, they've actually come down a bit as well. Now some people say, oh, a steak, because it's not, they're not symmetrical. That's absolute baloney. You know, some chaps like banging these out like a couple of hundred years ago. He's not going to worry about them being perfectly symmetrical. They're actually worn almost to non-existent. You can't replicate that. You can't replicate the patina either. It's a genuine antique. Here's a really strange one. Really flat side. Um, lots of lines on it. It's a different type again. You've got lovely sharp circles. Um, it's old, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna say it's a sort of like, you know, early 20th century, you know, 1920s or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, it's not the best bowl in the world. It's interesting and. Um, I think it just needs to be a warming up actually. Mm. It's okay, it's okay. The price will reflect it. That's really, really silvery, goldy, you know, really unusual. Now this is that, that type again. Suit, uh, my supplier suits have come across a load of these. Unusual. Well, it looks new, but I, I, it's just been looked after, isn't it? It's been kept indoors, it's been, you know, used up until the present day, probably. This sounds really bright. Now, if, if you were to polish, any of these bowls up, they sound a lot brighter, sharper, nicer. My own collection, um, you know, I've started to polish them up. Like, you know, I've got manis over there on my altar, and they, they shine up, they sound absolutely gorgeous, shine up. But some people say, oh, you've devoured them. You know, it's not that. They're my personal bowls, aren't they? It doesn't matter. And uh, that's as found, anyway. There's another shiny one. No, I was lucky enough to, it's weird I got this one as well, because I've got, this is like more of a ceremonial type bowl, with a rip lines on the top of the rim. We've got uh, beautiful double punch marks. And it's been kept clean. I got another. I got a pair of these. They're available for sale. Um, this is a trio. So it's weird how I've had another one of these and another one of these super rare types of Thado in one shipment. Now I can offer this separately. It's not going up with the others. It's uh, a B. And uh, I don't know. I'm not going to keep it. So really, I've got enough Thado. I find that these mallets are better for the for Fado. The lots of balls they really they need something chunky. Gorgeous. Last one guys. 
we got a dual texture um, so I've got one or two of these up for sale but most of them are gone now these are one, some of the most popular ones it's lovely there's no inscription it's an F it's an F sharp actually it's a gorgeous voice on these they're always the same they're always always quite damn bright well looked after perfect condition so I'll be listing these bows very soon on my Etsy my pattern store and eBay um, like I say if you want to listen to any individually I have a little video or something of, of each one I don't mind doing it I don't mind doing it if, if you want to listen to a few I'll do that at the same time upload them to SoundCloud and um, then, you know you don't have to buy anything it helps me anyway if you say oh I wanna can I listen to that one I put the link then in the sales listings for other people you know even if you don't buy it it helps it gives me a kick up the backside to actually record them because uh, it's all really time consuming show you a couple more of the cup fado now collectors we love the cup fado because um, you know what's not to like really you've got a lovely black one here wow yeah it's quite a thin one that I personally I like the thick ones Look at that one, it's like a mini, um, it's like <laughs> th classic Fado shape with the ritual slashes on the outside. It's just smaller. I find this type rattly in the hand, but it doesn't sound rattly. You got a, it's like a dual tone. So if I was to check this one, it would probably come up as like, as two, two notes. What I do is when I uh, when I jot a note down on the bottom of them, I just jot down the one that's fundamental, really, the one that um, dominates. Even if you have two or three. So I'm going to clean all these up, wash them. There's more in that box over there as well. There's uh, you know a hundred, maybe a bit more. Than See, absolutely filthy. It's not going to sound good when it's covered in muck. But it's, it's almost like they've dug out the ground somewhere, some of these. Really bad. But I'm not, I'm not going to complain, I'm not moaning because I like... I actually said to him, I want tar tarnished ones, I want the dirty ones. So um, I don't want... I'd rather do that, do the washing myself. You know, uh, and be sympathetic with... Without abrasives and all the rest of it. And just all you've got then is the actual patina that it should have. Instead of coming up with a bowl that's been cleaned unsympathetically and covered in scratches. Because the guys up there they don't they don't really value them. There's no it's nothing to them, you know. He's just like some obviously he's come across a heap of these somewhere. And um, you know, there we are, we just chuck them in a box and off they go. But to me, they're, it's like treasure. I love them. So uh, I think, you know, I'm trying to work out a price because I've been looking at other people, you know, they got a few cup fado and um, I'm looking, probably looking about 70, 80, you know. So for the very small ones, probably about 60, 50, you know, ranging between 50 and 80, I think, for these. That, that seems like a good price, you know, because they weren't cheap for me to buy either, so i got to make a small profit. And um, it's, a, it's an amazing way to start your collection. And, and even the, the, the bowl connoisseurs, even after we've collected loads of, of different sets, you can't get hold of these little cup fado and then I'm just lucky to have all these so I'm going to build up a set of um, 12 or 13 for myself 
and everyone else can help themselves then, you know, you can just, uh, I'll list them as I go along and you can build your own setup. I'll list a couple of sets if I can make them up, yeah. So some of the better ones, in my opinion, are the small, thick, like this one here. It's uh, quite crudely made, the top isn't flat. You know, it's super fast frequency. Really bright, positive. And people say, oh, I love the, the deep, you know, bongy, gongy, massive bowls and gongs. Yeah, it's great, yeah. But you need to balance it out with a, a fast, light and bright frequencies. So if your setup includes a massive gong, you know, like myself, it can get a bit oppressive with the, you know, the low, you know, 80 hertz and all the rest of it. So having these bright, fast frequencies is a mess, really. It's all about balance, isn't it? So you can't just have one without the other. That's why we have the crystal bowls a lot of the time, to introduce that lightness to the, uh, to the event, the, uh, the sun bath. Or, you know, the one-to-one -one therapy. Like, these would be great for on the head. And, uh, you know, you can just dot them anywhere, really. But personally, I like to make a big group of them, just sit there, play them, and just get get stoned off the frequencies. You know, I'm, I love it. Euphoria. So, um, I'm not going to keep the best ones for myself. I'm, uh, I'm going through them and thinking, oh, I'll just have a set, you know, whatever. You know, a fourth octave bowls, that'll do me. So I'm not greedy. Anyway, thanks for watching people. And um, it's my third video of the day. I'm going to edit this now, upload it. I'll put a link, um, to all, all my links will be in the description. And please like and subscribe. Um, it encourages me to make a few more videos and you know, someone's kind of comments, oh, I love this. If, if you don't love it, don't comment. But if you like it and subscribe to me, I'd be really, really grateful. I really appreciate any comment. Thanks very much.